Hello everybody, it's wonderful to be able to bring you God's Word today. At church we have started um, a new series today called Frontline Sundays and um, it's a chance for us to look afresh at our days between Sundays, our Monday to Saturday life and reflect on the fact that God calls us to gather together. Yes, he does. But actually, he also calls us to scatter during the week. And each of us have a front line, a place where God has put us. That might be at work, at home, um, with a group of people on our street. It might be in the queue at the supermarket. It might be looking after our kids or grandkids. It might be um, on the bus. Um, it might be um, a club or an organisation that we belong to. But each of us have got a front line where God has put us where we can be encouraging and life-giving to those around us, where we can be witnesses to Jesus and his gospel and the, the message that he's entrusted us with. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at that more deeply um, and um, enjoying the videos that come along with this resource too. Before I read you the scripture for today, and before I uh, preach uh, to you today and share God's word with you, share some thoughts on that passage. I'd like you to be able to watch the video. Each session um, in this series, each Sunday, has a particular video that goes with it. And the link to this week's video is in the box below. So please click on the link below before you go any further. Pause me, click on the link below and then come back to me in a few moments when you've watched this video and then we'll continue uh, with the rest of the message. So our passage this morning is taken from the first letter of Peter. So 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 1 to 2 and it says this, Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia, who have been chosen and destined by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. That's our passage for this morning, the first two verses of Peter's first letter. In general, if you tell people that you go to church, they think it's because you're religious, perhaps, and it's what people like you do. Or maybe they think that, well, you've got friends there and it's a good place to connect with others and uh, I can understand why you go to that kind of organisation. Or maybe they know how well churches support one another and they're pleased that you belong to such a supportive community. That's perhaps the reason that they give for you going to church. And of course, whilst there's a grain of truth in all of these views, they miss what the New Testament really tells us about church. When Peter begins this letter that we've read the introduction to today, and he's writing to small groups of Christians scattered across what is now Turkey, he wants them to understand what it means to be church. And that's what we're looking at today, and that's what we'll be looking at over the next few weeks for us during Lent, the lead up to Easter. Lent is a time of preparation, isn't it? And uh, as we prepare ourselves for Holy Week, one way that we prepare ourselves is to look again at who we are and what calling Jesus has given us. Peter does this by helping these churches that he writes to see themselves as part of the Old Testament people of God, a continuation of those people. And he uses two key words and a stunning truth. And I'm going to share those two key words with you today and then finish with this stunning truth. 
that he shares with us. The first word is elect. He says to these churches and he says to us that we are God's elect. What does that mean? Well, God's purpose from Gen Genesis 12 onwards was that Abraham and all of his descendants would be blessed and would be a blessing to the world around. Not all these early Christians would have been Jewish by birth, the one, these ones that Peter writes to, yet Peter draws them into the ongoing story of God's intention for the world by using the language of calling. He calls them into this ongoing story that started with Abraham and continues through their time and, of course, up to us today, to be the people of God, to be a blessing to the world around us. Whatever our journey to faith in Jesus was or has been, when we surrender to the Lordship of Jesus, we become part of this called people too. When we gather as worshippers, we remind ourselves that we believe a very particular story about God. And if you cast your mind back to the video that you've just watched, which is in the box below, we are the red dots. And these red dots in this video statistically represent that in UK around 6% of people worship in a Christian church once a month or more. It's not many, but it's significant. Because when we gather together, we remind ourselves of who we are, ready to be scattered into the world for the rest of the week. And we remind ourselves as this when we gather, we remind ourselves that um, this is God's world. And he created it. That's what we believe as God's people. We believe it's broken because of sin. We believe that Jesus's death makes new life possible for everyone and anyone and that we believe that one day everything will be transformed and we live as people with this distinct story in a wider culture that may not believe any of that cast your mind back to that video and see those red dots again in that big grid we are the red dots and when we gather we do so to strengthen and encourage one another to be who we are, God's chosen people, God's called people. And that's what elect means in the Bible. It's not a way of saying that we're more important than everybody else. It means that we are called to a special purpose, to, to share God's love, to share God's blessing with the world around us. It's like God has given us a blessing, but we're not to keep it to ourselves. We're meant to share it with everyone that we meet and everyone we come into contact with. The second word that I want to share with you, which reflects um, our passage this morning, is exiles. These people that Peter was writing to were exiles. They were scattered, weren't they, across ancient Turkey in small little worshipping communities. And this word that Peter uses recalls the great disaster of the Old Testament. Can you remember what that was? Yes, it was when Israel lost their land, when they were taken captive by the Babylonians and taken to Babylon. At first they hoped for a quick return, but the prophets told them that the most, the most of that first generation of exiles would not return to Jerusalem. However, they could remain distinct and be blessed where they were in Babylon. You can read all about that in Jeremiah 29. But today we are also scattered most of the time, aren't they? We are also exiles, if you like. We don't spend all of our time with fellow Christians at church. We may be the only disciples of Jesus in our homes in our families, in our extended families or at work or in our class at school or university or college. 
And these are the places, these are our front lines where we are called to shine when we're scattered during the week. So it's important that we don't grey out, isn't it? And by that, I mean lose our distinctiveness. We've got a distinctive message that we share, that we believe in, that shapes our life together and it centres around Jesus. This is the message that we come together to think about again, to meditate on each Sunday when we gather. But when we scatter, it's important that we don't grey out and lose that message and become the same as the surrounding culture around us. God has a plan in placing us in our scattered contexts. So frontline, a term that you'll be hearing a lot over the next few weeks, is a term that describes these places, these scattered places that God sends us to and that he's put us in. Of course, this word frontline has lots of connotations, doesn't it? For some, it reminds them of a battlefield, the front line of a battlefield. And we want to be careful with this metaphor. But for some Christians, keeping a Christian witness in a place can be really difficult. It can feel like a battle sometimes to, to be that Christian witness. The term frontline has become a buzzword, hasn't it, over this last couple of years, over the pandemic. Maybe you yourself are a frontline worker. Others will have come across this term before in their workplaces or classrooms or hospital wards or offices. But for our purpose, frontlines over the next few weeks are our everyday places where we live, work, study or play where we're likely to connect with people who aren't Christians. We are all the scattered people of God. And we all have front lines. So they're the first two words that I wanted to share with you this morning. Elect and exiles. We're called to be God's elect and we're called and we are also exiles out in the world when we're not gathering together at church. So now for this stunning truth that I wanted to share with you. Peter concludes his opening greeting with a reminder of the wondrous work of the Trinity. Did you notice that he mentioned Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Have a look again over the passage if you need to. Our situ situations are known by God. God the Father knows us. He knows us and he knows the context that he's put us in. We might only see part of the picture, understand a part of the puzzle, but he sees it all. We've been set apart by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has worked within us, his sanctifying work in making us holy, giving us hope. This message doesn't all depend on us. We haven't got to conjure something up. It's not about us just being encouraging to people that we meet, but letting the Holy Spirit that indwells within us flow out of us into, peop into other people's lives. It's about pointing people to the good news about Jesus. It's about listening to the Holy Spirit and letting him work in each of our days. And thirdly, we can be confident in our relationship with God because of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. In our passage, Peter talks about the sprinkling of blood. And that was a sign in the Old Testament of being included into the covenant of God. And we have a new covenant in Jesus, don't we? Because of what he's done, the spilling of his blood on the cross means that we are now in a, re a right relationship with him if we bow to the lordship of Jesus. So we can be sure about these wonderful truths, these stunning truths as we step out onto our front lines. All this, of course, is in the context, context of being obedient to Jesus, of following him, aligning ourselves with Christ and his purposes in the world and choosing not to do things our own way. Peter rejoices with his readers in all that God has done 
for us. And he reminds them and us that we live out the implications of the gospel in our scattered places. We are elect and we are exiles. The series goes on to explore the implications of this truth, these truths. For us, wherever we are, whatever we do and whoever we are. And it finishes by looking at what it means to be a disciple making community together for the sake of the world around us. So cast your minds back to the video once again. We are those red dots when we gather to strengthen one another as a distinct people. And we are also those red dots when we scatter during the week to many different places with many different people, people who can make all the difference in the world. Amen.